Well, hi, this is Mark from Embedded Pro, and it's week 15 of my series investigating the ARM Cortex M33 core. And last week I finished with this slide showing the core platform for the LPC 55S69, and we observed that there are two Cortex M33 cores on that microcontroller. And so this week, two Cortex M33 cores in LPC 55S69. Here's a more detailed diagram of the asymmetric dual core architecture on the LPC 55S69. We can see that there are two ARM Cortex M33 cores. These are named CPU0 and CPU1. As we can see, CPU0 is a full implementation of Cortex M33 with a floating point unit, memory protection, the DSP instructions, the ITM debug feature, SAU, and Trust Zone. It's the primary core, and it's the core that always starts up when the microcontroller exits from reset. In contrast, CPU1 is also a Cortex M33 core, but it doesn't have any of the optional extensions. It doesn't have Trust Zone. CPU1 is the secondary core and it's managed by CPU0. CPU1 will stay in reset until it's enabled by CPU0. This is really important to know because it means that CPU1 is not capable of starting up the microcontroller. It's always going to be CPU0 that starts. Now NXP don't dictate how the two cores are used, but CPU0 will always start. This means that CPU1 can be a secondary core and might be dedicated to managing the peripherals. As you can see in the diagram, both cores have access through the AHB bus to all of the peripherals and memory on chip. So CPU1 may be used to manage the peripherals, responding to interrupts and DMA requests, and then processing data before passing it through a mailbox to CPU0. The LPC 55S69 has a mailbox implementation, and as we'll see shortly, there's a mutex feature in this mailbox. It's straightforward to design software for the two cores, CPU0 and CPU1, because these can be treated as separate projects. So different software teams can develop code for CPU0 and CPU1, and they can be integrated late in the development flow, easing the time to market. And as we'll see, MCU Expresso IDE has got really great support for dual core configuration and debugging. The Slave project or the CPU1 project can be linked with the CPU0 project by the application configuration. And there are images can be linked together by a linker script so that we have one image that finally gets downloaded into internal flash memory. But as we'll see for debugging, the two projects can be debugged independently but in the same workspace. It's a very convenient feature for software developers. Let's take a quick look at some of the key documentation for dual core. I'm here in the user manual for the LPC 55S69. One important block in the LPC 55S69 for dual core is the syscon. In this chapter, we've got the register descriptions and there's some very important registers for dual core right down at the bottom here, we can see three important registers. The CPU control register, the CPU1 boot address register, and the CPU status register. The control register is very simple. There's an enable bit to enable the clock to CPU1, and a reset bit to reset or not reset the CPU1. Note also that there's an unlock code C0C4, which is a magic number that must be written to this register for any changes to the clock enable and reset enable to have effect. Since CPU0 initializes CPU1, CPU0 can write the boot address for the code that CPU1 will run. So this will be the base address where the code image for CPU1 resides. And lastly, there's a CPU status register. We can determine if CPU0, the primary core, is sleeping, if CPU1 is sleeping, and if CPU0 and CPU1 have locked up. That would be an error condition. 
The second important chapter for multi-core on the LPC 55S69 is right down at the bottom here, and it's the inter-CPU mailbox chapter. The LPC 55S69 has a peripheral named the mailbox, and this enables communication between the two cores. CPU 0 and CPU 1 can assert an interrupt onto the other core, and in fact each can assert up to 32 interrupts on the other core with IRQ0 and IRQ1 registers. These of course are 32 bits. And finally there's the mutex register, and this provides a mechanism for testing and locking shared memory resources before reading or writing data to that shared resource. MCU Expresso IDE is also very well equipped for multi-core and let me refer you to chapter 19 of the MCU Expresso IDE user guide where there's a very informative chapter about multi-core projects. And then lastly the software development kit, the SDK for the LPC 55S69 comes with a multi-core SDK. This SDK is integrated into the LPC 55S69 SDK and provides a comprehensive multi-core driver. There are three main components of the multi-core driver. First of all in blue here, the multi-core manager driver. And we'll see this in action today when we look at a dual-core project in MCU Expresso. There's also an embedded remote procedure call layer and also a remote processor messaging light layer. We won't look at those two today. Well, that's really enough theory for this week. Come back next time and I'll show you dual core projects running in MCU Expresso and we'll look at some of the advanced debugging features. Well, I'll see you next time and if you enjoy these videos, then please subscribe to my channel like the video and share it with your friends. Goodbye for now and I'll see you next week.